It's not. Tony Khan had the media call, and he said Friday's a lot of words. final battle streaming special was, quote, something to consider. He used the phrase three times. Once when asked about making a change with the Ring of Honor tag titles, considering both MGF and Adam Cole are injured. Another when asked about the decision to have Samoa Joe vacate the Ring of Honor title instead of losing it in the ring. And again when discussing MGF actually appearing at ROH's TV project on Honor Club. It was a largely non-newsworthy call, it says here. Khan did confirm that he met with officials from the CW in 2022 in L.A. about bringing Ring of Honor to their network. He felt that the time wasn't right. Hasn't had a lot of detailed conversations about ROH's TV future, saying he is excited for both AEW and ROH to hit the TV rights market in 2024. Said the relationship between himself and WBD is strong, but that ROH is still a third party in the relationship. He said there is strong interest out there for both properties. The match he talked about most was Athena versus Billy Starks, which is the main event. It's an angle he has been personally involved with on a week-to-week basis. Isn't that every angle? When asked why Athena hadn't defended her title on AWTV, Khan simply said he would be open to it. <laughs> it's your company, brother. Yeah, and not only that, you're trying to make ROH special. I thought that was one of the reasons why she has not defended the title on AEW TV was because you were building this whole thing with her minion Billy Starks and she has had 22 or some sort of, you know, incredible amount of title defenses. Yeah, I guess that was an answer and maybe it's completely out of context, but you know, it doesn't make anything sound really special or anything like that. Like, no, you want to see Athena, you're going to have to pay to see Athena and watch her on Honor Club, and you're missing out if you're not watching it. Not like, you know, okay, well, maybe she'll show up. I'm open to it. I get it, but I don't know. Him, sometimes with his answers some at these things, it's the wrong thing said. I think we heard that when he came to hyping up some of the ticket sales for All In 2 already, and... I don't know. Some of his conferences and and media calls are tough to listen to. When he was asked why Joe didn't drop the title in the ring, he said he wanted Joe to be a focus of AEW, and it would have been a challenge to have him defend the TV title while doing that. What? (laughs) Why? What? You, You had a guy injure his foot and is now out of action forever, a partner that he, who's got a bad hip who injured, and they still defend the ROH tag team titles, I think Samoa Joe could pull off defending the TV title. Or, or, you could have built it into the storyline where there was some sort of reason, some way that MJF caused a distraction. Somebody did something, and Samoa Joe put over somebody on AEW television for that world TV title that got people excited, and then they saw it and maybe wanted to watch Honor Club. You you could have did that, I guess. And he said there might be more of a Lucha presence to be announced for the show, and stay tuned for the final entrant in the Survival of the Fittest TV title match. And then when he was asked about the subscriber count for Honor Club, he did not answer. So the show is at... Uh, uh, 2253, which is, uh, you know, that's not good, but uh, like a couple days ago, it was at 1,000. So they added the Moxley, Claudio, and Danielson versus Dax and Cash and Mark Briscoe, and uh, 1,200 tickets have been added since they announced that match. So that's good. Still 1,500 tickets left over, and uh, the show is a Friday. And that's so, what building? I... I forget. I didn't write it down here. Okay. Well, regardless. But, yeah, I mean, I know Athena and Billy Starks obviously is the main event, and that's the thing that they have been building to, but it was important that they got FTR and Mark Briscoe on there against the Blackpool Combat Club. That was a savvy move, and it really probably wouldn't hurt them to add something else to either regionally that may move a couple of hundred tickets or, you know, something big to to try to drive some interest to that as well, too, because, again, I don't know how many buys that they're averaging for these ROA shows. I'm sure that they're holding their own pretty well, but, you know, on a, on a Friday night going into a long weekend here where people's attention is we're going towards the holidays and people's money is a little short right now you know it probably would be a good thing to try to throw something else at this to try to entice people to buy the rock of all people dwayne 
Dwayne The Rock Johnson, as Dave likes to call him, Dwayne. He will be playing, of all people, Mark Kerr. Well, they got some things in common. A24 Films, the company behind Iron Claw, announced on Monday they will work with Johnson's Seven Bucks Productions to produce a movie based on Kerr's life. Seven Bucks Productions originally announced plans for the film in 2019, with Kerr having given the project his blessing. The film will borrow the name of a 2002 HBO documentary on Kerr titled The Smashing Machine, which covered his career and struggle with addiction to pain medicine. That was an awesome, awesome yeah, documentary, by the way. Incredible. Yeah. And uh, Ben Safdie will serve as a writer and director. Dwayne and Benny are singular talents. Their shared vision for Mark's inspiring story is electrifying, <laughs> said Noah Sacco of A24. We are deeply honored to have their trust as collaborators bring this incredibly special project to life. Hey, let's keep it a buck. He said in the uh, opening that, you know, he's a legendary MMA fighter. He's not, in, really, when it comes to his career, but there was this legendary moment in time that the Smashing Machine came out where you got to see behind the scenes for the first time, at least to my knowledge, in my world, of being able to see behind what goes on in Japan, being able to see into a dojo and seeing him interact with Boss Rutan and seeing his real-life issues with drugs, with the woman that he was with, and the issues that that caused. And also, from what came out of that, was a story about Mark Coleman. And that's another incredible part of that documentary is... It's almost as much about Mark Holman it is, as it is Mark Quirr. And if you can find this documentary, I would suggest you watch it, whether you're a wrestling fan or just or a fight fan. It doesn't matter. It is a universal story that, again, really shows an incredible, incredible moment in time when it came to the mixed martial arts universe. Bruce, uh, yeah. <laughs> Trying to, trying to look here. You got the Tokyo Sports MVP we talked yesterday. Tetsuya Naito is the MVP. Sucks to be poor Sonata, who was the IWGP heavyweight champion pretty much leave all year. Leave him alone! What do you mean, leave him alone? Well, you are on Sonata constantly. Well, you had to you get know, in your dig about him yesterday. Hey. They tried something with the guy. You can't fault him for that. They gave him the haircut. I can't. They, yeah, no! Of course you, I can no, you, you know can't. who they, they tried can't. something with back in the day is Jinder Mahal. You wait a and second. And one day, ironically, right uh -huh. before they were about to go to India, they beat him. Is but, what hey, they did. They, they were like, they, "That we have to run our course here." They tried something with Dominic Mysterio, did they not? And you yeah, and it worked out that. great. You were all about exactly. You never know how things. And are I told going you to that from out. day one, but no one wanted to listen to me about that one. Oh, uh, listen. Nobody to you. wants to listen to me about Sonata. Mm. And then the best match. Are you ready for this? All right. The best match in all of Japan in the year of our Lord, 2023. The top match was the great Muta and Shinsuke Nakamura. Hey, this is how these awards work. It is definitely how these awards work. Hey, you got to try If you would have just read that first, the, all of the rest of these wouldn't even matter. <laughs> Orange sold the knee, which is... He got attacked. I don't remember him getting attacked Matt Menard on said he was attacked the night before, which would have been ROH. So it's if probably ROH. Are you smoking or what's what? happening here? I don't, what the fuck What is, is happening? I have no Bro. Clue. What is this? <laughs> Dude. I think there's... Not, I've changed nothing. Smoking is room. bad enough for you, but you don't need <laughs> right. to do it on the air. What is happening here? God. I'm glad I'm not the only one experiencing this. Did you die? <laughs> I've ascended. Yeah. I don't know. And it looks like it's changing colors, too, which is weird. It's going from red to blue. What the hell's flashing? <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, everyone's saying, this, shut man. your lines, dude. They're completely closed. Oh, my God. Maybe I open them. What is... There we go. The sun moved? Well, uh, yeah, the sun... Actually, the... No! Old... Oh. Okay. The sun will continue to move, and then we'll be able to see again. We then had uh, Abaddon take on Trish Adora. Hey, guys. Did you love this clip? 
If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.